So we're still sure what we're doing, right? Huh? We're still not sure what this is? No, we don't know. We've made some guesses. Would you like to hear some of the guesses? Oh, let me have them. Have at me, so. Blah, 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 blah. Probably a lizard, too. That's true. <laughs> See, well, it's funny, huh? One of them said global warming. One of them it's said a lizard presentation. Lizard too. Lizards or something. Why don't you share with us what you're gonna be what you're gonna be presenting? Well, we got a lot of tiny. We got a lot of small animals. We're gonna start off with we got like a baby, maybe a few tortoise. We have a few lizards. We have a few snakes, and we have one or two. Pets. So Can that's what we're so bringing out. Oh, will you tell them where you're from? So I'm from California. We're in Philly, but I came out here to live in California. And we're right now in Fountain Valley, so that's where we're stationed at right now. And where, where do you work? We work at the Reptile Zoo, which is also Jurassic Parties and Prehistoric Pets. Uh, I was right. You were right. Oh, <laughs> yes. Her face is so giggly right now. So we're just getting some of the bigger animals to get ready to set up, but we can start with the little animals whenever you guys are ready to start off. We're ready. Okay. So or is this for any special occasion or are we just doing a reptile show? <laughs> we are just doing a reptile show. The special occasion is we love reptiles, especially lizards. Yeah, we love reptiles. Come on. All right. So, we love the why, so why don't we start off with a very basic guy who's very common all over the place. This is Spike. So this is uh -huh. <laughs> you guys know what Spike is? Oh, it's like a pointy thing. What, what is that? Is Spike Chalice? A pointy thing, like a yeah. finger now. Chalice knows what Spike is. Go ahead, Chalice. What is Spike? It's, it's a reptile. What kind of it's reptile? So he is a bearded dragon. They get yep. the same because bearded. Oh, okay. I have your ring, lizards. She has two of them. He has two of these as pets? No, tell us that she does, yes. So, Spike here, do you guys know where bearded dragons come from, first off? From the wild? From the wild, yes, but do you know where they come from initially? So, do they come from Asia, Africa, where do you guys think? Africa, America? <laughs> no. Australia? Yes, yeah, these guys come from more, Australia. Oh, right. Okay. They come from Yoda. Australia. You know we had a visitor here from Australia, so we know oh, a little bit about Australia. So nice. I All you Yoda. can't really see what's going on. So. <laughs> and I, I click in Yoda as a wizard. <laughs> so, what's the wizard's name? So his hey, name Cookie? is Spike. Hmm. He gets, because he has a bunch of spikes all throughout his whole entire body. Most of those don't hurt unless he decides to puff out his chin, blow himself up, just basically puff up like a pufferfish. Then they can hurt a tiny But overall, he's a pretty chill reptile. So you see these chill. holes right on the side of his head? What's that? Those are his ears. So all reptiles yeah. have They're, holes on the side of their head. Like How long do you uh, got them for? What was that? How long do you got them for? So we've had Spike for about five, six years. So he's still relatively young. In captivity, these guys can last about 10, 15 years. They mm -hmm. make great starter pets. They're just like chilling out a lot of time. Like I could literally put them like that on my shoulder, and you could just chill out there. Presentation. Hey, guess what? Guess what? What? I could you know that's a reptile too. She has Hi. a pet. You're a dragon named Yoda. He has a beard cookie. dragon. Sounds somewhat convenient. <laughs> Sounds like a good name for a beard dragon. And I have Cookie too. And one named Cookie. And one named Cookie and Yoda. It's a very interesting combination. <laughs> But that's Spike overall in the general sense. I mean, he's a pretty handsome boy, very lizard, but most beards are. Don't really, never really met one that's very mean. But we have more than just dragons and lizards. So you guys ready to see your first snake? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You guys want to see a snake? Yeah. yeah. I couldn't hear you guys for a minute. Snake. Yeah, I hear you. You ready to see a snake? Yeah. Yes. No. No, no, no. All right, so this girl is a very friendly one, and one that you guys want if you don't like snakes. Yeah. Ironic. This is Julie. Oh, that's Julie. 
Hi, Julie. So Julie here is known as a king snake. A king snake. Now, what's cool about king snakes is that their favorite food, aside from rats and small lizards, is actually other snakes. So these guys will eat other species, not necessarily their king snake, but other snakes. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what their favorite snake to eat is, though? Ouch. So, okay. their favorite snake to actually eat is rattlesnake. Whoa. Bang. Yeah, so these guys are actually immune to rattlesnake venom. So even if mm -hmm. one gets bitten by a rattlesnake, it'll get hurt by the fangs, but it won't get any of the venom inside its body. So it's actually immune to their venom. Now, she's still relatively young. She's not as big as she can be. She's roughly about, I want to say, three and a half to four feet long. I hear you. Whoa. But these guys can push up to six feet if they need. Really just... That's so big. Uh, what was that? So long. Big. Yeah, so snakes usually get to be very long animals. We have some very large ones at our zoo. Some can push over 18 feet long. He's just showing us. <laughs> Uh, now, you, guys know, you guys know how to tell venomous from a non venomous snake, though? Okay. Teach us. Um, He's going to teach us how to tell if a snake is poisonous or not. Listen up. So, venomous. There's a difference between poisonous okay. and venomous. Yeah, venomous, venomous. Means, yeah, venomous yeah. means more offensive, so you get bit, stung, or that sort of thing. Poisonous means that you have to ingest it or have to your body. Yeah. Thank you for that. So, you guys look at her head, if she'll stay still long enough. You see how her head is relatively narrow shaped? Mm hmm So that means that she's non-venous. In fact, she's what's known as stricter. Thanks. So when it's a venomous snake though, right behind here on the head would actually be, I hear you, would actually be a much more triangular diamond shaped face where they actually store their fangs and their venom. Yeah. You know, I can tell that she's in a relatively good mood just to be exploratory just you because of that. I told him I was trusting and he had a shower. You're okay, big girl. You're okay. <laughs> so she's relatively friendly. She's a bit skittish, especially in the morning because she's always being woken up. But overall, very friendly snake. So we have more snakes here in, in those guys. So let me bring out a little baby now. You ready for this one? A little baby. <laughs> you gonna show us another snake? Uh, we're gonna get to another snake after this one. This one. She looks like as a teenager too. So, so this is Tater Tot. Okay. Tater Tot. So she's about a two-year-old African Spurthite or Sulcata tortoise. Tortoise. And this is really as big as she, she's only probably like a couple inches bigger than when she came out of the egg. But she's still a baby. She can start. There you go. Zoom up with that face. Oh. Uh, okay. uh, coming out. Now, can someone tell, does anyone know the difference between a tortoise and a turtle? Uh, a tortoise is more smaller and a turtle is a little bit bigger. Good guess. Uh, that's a good one. That's a good guess. Although some can be the size of a small trunk. At different sizes and other turtles. There's yes. another. There's another reason. There's another. <laughs> the difference is different. Is that, yeah. The first one is actually their diet. So this little guy here will only eat vegetation. So that's a tortoise. Tortoises are only vegetarians. Okay. Turtles can eat both meat orally, so they're omnivores or carnivores in some cases. Okay. Now, another big difference is actually where they live. So tortoises strictly live on land. Her feet are designed digging in the dirt, or her shell is designed <laughs> yeah. to protect them. Turtles can live in both land or water. They can be semi-aquatic if they can. So the difference is what they eat and mm -hmm. whether they live on water or whether they can go into water or not. Yes, most turtles are able go swimming, but there are a few that are designed to look on land just like tortoises. So the dive one is probably the safer one. Oh, and despite being so small, she's probably no more than maybe like a, less than 
there's a pound of wheat. Yeah. Over 200 pounds and lived to be over 200 years old. Yeah, I didn't know. If I, if I knew it would be mine, I don't want it. That's a long commitment for a uh, for a pet. Well, a lot of times these guys are actually written in their family's will to be passed on to family. Sometimes they're children, sometimes they're grandchildren, sometimes I'm not a member of the family. That's just how it works. But again, this is how they start out. I I'm now going to show you guys one that's probably like in its teenage years. You ready to see this one? Yeah. So this guy's name though is Ted. Yeah. But they came up in my pot. Come on, big guy. Oh, my God. Oh. I was like, I'm chill with that. Bit of an upgrade. Oh, look. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. So this is the same sort of tortoise I just showed you guys before, mm. just. <laughs> is he related to the other one? Yeah, it's the same exact kind. Oh, related. He wants to know uh, if they're... That's the same clutch, if that's what you're asking. No. Yeah, Although they can lay to about 40 or so eggs. But again, strictly vegetarian. He's got he's, a... Uh, a carnivore. No, no, no vegetarian. A carnivore. Oh, vegetarian. Meat. In his teenage years. No, but the only eats like him are no. Now, there's a way to tell if it's a boy or a girl. You actually have to flip them up like this. So you see how it's sort of curved in down here? Yes. Boy. Girls have a more flatter stomach. And he's roughly about... So he's a heavy boy. How much does he weigh? You cut out a little bit. 40 pounds, man. But this is like only a fraction of how much he can weigh. Like I said, these guys seem to grow up to be over 180 to 200 pounds. Oh my gosh. But these guys can be had as pets. They're actually pretty easy pets to take care of. They only eat vegetation. So like cucumbers, pears, apples, bananas. Oh, all nice. that sort of stuff. What's that one's name? So his name is Tank, and you can probably see that's a uh, that's a cool name for a big turtle. Yeah. So tortoises like him and turtles too. They actually use their shell as a form of defense. What they do is they tuck their head in like that and actually close their legs in the head to sort of make themselves unable to be attacked. But these guys can dig them. Are amazing diggers. They're are designed to actually dig at least a mile down a day. <laughs> Amazing digging. And they do have a very powerful beak. That is a beak at the front, which can cut through hard vegetation and could probably do some damage to your finger. Oh. Yeah, so we always try and be careful with these guys, both while handling them and also while feeding them. Uh, there we go, big guy. Uh, there we go. <laughs> All right, let's bring it on there, snake. <laughs> So this one has a bit of a cool name. His first is, is Lewis. His name is Lewis, but what he is called Lewis is a gopher snake. Oh wow! Wow. Gopher snake. I used to have a gopher snake. You used to have a gopher snake? A long time ago. So do you know why they're called gopher snakes? Because uh, their skin is look like gopher. Mm -hmm. That's a good guess. Their skin is more designed to look like a rattlesnake that are left alone, actually. Okay. So they're called gopher snakes because they don't eat gophers, but because they go into holes that gophers have made and actually live with them down there. They don't actually eat on them. So they sleep on the on the dirt, like uh, underground. So, so a gopher is a rodent that would dig up a hole in the. These guys, along with some owls, tortoises, frogs, mice, rats, and rabbits, will actually all go in the hole with the actually, with them. How do they dig the holes? Well, these guys wouldn't dig the holes. The gophers would dig it and use their claws to actually dig through the ground. So the gophers do it for them? Yeah. And these guys go there and they don't bother the gophers at all. Nah. They just follow the gophers while the, the gopher is done? They'll actually go in the hole with the gopher while it's in the hole. So these guys just don't eat gophers. They just hang out with the gophers? Yep. And so will some species of owls, tortoises, toads, mice, rats, and some rabbits. 
gophers are basically construction workers that make a neighborhood underground for all these animals. Wow, that's interesting. Now, what's cool about him is that he's <laughs> fully <laughs> grown up. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how long he is. So he's roughly about four, four and a half feet long. Oh, four and a half. But again, he's a non venomous snake. You can see by the shape of the head. Narrow headed, not diamond shape or triangle. However, these guys do pretend to be rattlesnakes in a menagerie of different ways. So these guys, as a defense, actually pretend to be. The first reason, like I said before, is because they're colored rattlesnake. The second reason is because they can actually flatten their head to look like a venomous snake. So they actually look more. And a lot of things you can actually rattle their tail in dead leaves, even though there's no rattle back there, but you can actually rattle, wiggle it in dead leaves to make it sound like a rattle. The fuses are also poisonous. A family sake? What was that? A family snake with the the poison tail? So these guys tend to be the venomous snake or the rattlesnake that has a rattle on its tail. Ah. Know, these guys don't. So just imagine all day and there's all these dead leaves on the ground that's come off from the trees. So these guys tend to be the rattlesnakes so actually use those dead leaves by wiggling their tail in the leaves to make it sound like it's a rattle. So it pretends to be a venomous snake. Yes, in order to be left alone. But other than that, it's completely harmless. Aren't you big guy? Yeah, gopher snakes tend to run away from problems. Oh, well, my collar. <laughs> gopher snakes tend to be rather friendly snakes that fly run away from danger rather than face it head on. But at his side right now, at his side right now, he probably eats small mice, maybe small lizards. So that's what he'd probably be eating at this point in his life. Now, the next animal I'm going to bring out is our first non-reptile, though. So this is not a reptile. Any Star Wars fans in the group? You guys, do you like Star Wars? Yeah. 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 Well, I don't have Baby Yoda, but I do have his favorite food. That's his favorite food. So his name is Java. More specifically, Java the Frog. Java the Frog. Oh, it's so big. I know. Look at that. So believe it or not, he's not fully grown yet. He can actually grow to be the size of someone's head. <laughs> His name's Jabba the Frog instead of Jabba the Hutt. Cool. <laughs> he looked like that. He looked like that. Very first Star Wars movie uh, from that scene of uh, of that big uh, guy. Looked like a frog. Yeah. Yeah. Neymar looks like a slug, but yeah, that guy. Well, he looks like Jabba from some angles as well. Now, again, he's, now he's called an African bullfrog. So this is another animal that comes from Africa. Now, he looks all shiny because he was taken out of water. Amphibians need water in order to help breathe through their skin. Amphibians? Amphibians. Amphibians. Like toads, newts, that sort of stuff. Salamanders. So amphibians are what came before reptiles. So they're bound to water because they need to use the water to breathe through their skin. Hmm. So you guys, have any of you guys ever had a dry nose before? Yeah. So that's basically what happens with their skin if it dries out. They have trouble breathing. That's why mm. they always stay wet or moist in this case. Now, believe it or I not, for, I do that for my lizards too. Now, believe it or not, he's actually not really eating insects anymore. Why? Well, because insects are basically like French fries to him. They don't really give him enough nutrients. Mm. In fact, what he eats are actually mice and rats, large ones. You can actually eat any of the snakes I just brought out. Small lizards, fish, small birds, like a common food for this guy as a pet is actually baby chickens. And he actually eats other versions of himself. So he actually eats smaller bullfrogs. Why do you want to eat other versions uh, of smaller bullfrogs? 
Well, for one thing, for competition, just so that they don't have to compete for other food sources. But they are cannibals, so that means that they eat their own species. So they have no shame in eating their own kind. Ah. Now, cannibalism is not a common trait found in a lot of animals because a lot of them are more trying to conserve their species. But these guys are one of the many anim few animals that don't care. They just go ahead and eat whatever comes into their range. Pointing upwards like this. And with those set of teeth, long as this powerful jaw, he can actually bite off your finger. Wow. I ain't going there, uh, him, then. Yeah. But believe it or not, these guys can be had as pets. All the animals I've brought out so far can be had as pets, and most of the animals I'm still going to bring out can be had as pets, too. Granted, you probably want to treat this guy with a bit of respect. I treat him 100% with respect. Yeah. Now, he is a powerful animal. That's why I'm sort of holding him like a cheeseburger a little bit, just to make sure he can't really jump. <laughs> Yeah, but you see those big legs down there? Yep. Up about two feet forward. Uh, I don't know. We'll go I'll keep there for a brief second. There you go. There's another. Yeah, he would eat everything. What is that? He would eat every species he finds. Uh, they are limited to what they can basically fit inside their mouth. So anything that's probably like no bigger than maybe like this or something like that can easily go into their mouth. Anything that's bigger than that, though, is... It's out of the board. Yeah. So anything like, say, like honey badger, a very large snake, uh, armadillo, anything like that that they can find is basically off limits to them. What about fly? Uh, again, like I said, insects aren't really their main source of food. These oh, guys, okay. These guys don't have a long tongue like you would see, like tree frogs and that sort of stuff. Their tongue is no much longer than ours. Oh. It's just dump onto their prey and then use their powerful jaws to clamp onto it. Fish? Uh, they could eat fish if it's small enough and in shallow water, but in deep water, they're likely to get eaten by said fish. Oh, okay. Now, what's cool about these guys is that these guys can actually lay, well, female bees, this is the boy. These guys can lay a clutch of about 500 eggs. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And then the dad, which is what this guy would be. I hear you. I know you want to go back in the water soon. Just give me a few more. I didn't know that either. Guys the until they're big enough to fend for themselves. So the dads take care of the kids. For how long? Uh, depending on how long the transformation is from tadpole to small frog, usually like a couple of months. Oh. Huh. It depends. Yeah, he's he's going to get in the water. So, all right. Uh, next thing I'm going to bring out is another snake, one of my personal favorites to handle. What kind of snake is this one? What was that? What kind of snake is this one? Corn snakes. That's not because they eat corn, but farmers use these guys to actually protect their corn fields. From oh, so they like a one of those uh, sheep dogs. Yeah, uh, no, nah, the other one, like a quo. Like a what? A quo. You know that. You know how it's like a. Uh, yeah. like a a scarecrow. Oh, well, they also go, they can scare away some birds, but these guys are actually used to actually eat and throw away mice, rats, and locusts. So they actually take animals right away. They don't just scare the animals, they eat them. Oh, yeah. Wow. But these guys are actually one of the friendly the snakes. Actually, Corn snakes are very friendly snakes. People often get them as starter snakes because they're that easy to care for. <laughs> But this is an albino, so you see how her eyes are actually pretty red? Yep, I see them. Yep, and you'll notice how her body is very white. It doesn't really have any, like, dark pigmentation or anything like that. That means that she's an albino. So albinoism means you black, black pigmentation. So, for example, if it was, like, on Lewis, our gopher snake from earlier, any of the black or brown spots would actually be non-existent. They would have to be placed by white spots. 
Now, these guys last about 10, 20, sometimes as pets. Really just depends on how well you take care of them. How old is he? Doodles is about six, so still in a baby phase, not as big as they can be, only maybe like three feet long and not too thick around. They tend to get thicker as they get bigger. And so, uh, so if he's seven, how big uh, he's got to be? Well, it really depends on the species. Some grow faster than other ones. Like some of our largest snakes, they start off at a foot long at like seven years old or eight feet long. These guys, they grow at a much slower rate, but they can grow pretty large overall. So at max speed, five, six feet long would be their max size, give or take. Uh, so not the most giant snakes in the world, but still friendly ones. You get a wide variety of different coloration. This is just very, very friendly. And again, non-venomous. You can see by the shape of her head, non-venomous. So he can't uh, poison you? No, he can't poison you. No, he can't. He's not. He can't do that. So like I said before, if a snake has more diamond shapes, so it means right behind the head, it'd be a lot. So more. the ones with the diamond shapes can't poison you? Yeah, most of those are able to poison you. So the one that don't have a uh, non-diamond uh, shape could poison you? Anything that does have diamond can poison you. No diamond can't poison you. Hmm. Now, my next animal is a tiny lizard, a very tiny so bigger than probably like, on her hand. But his is Zeus. And these guys are known as leopard geckos. Leopard geckos. You'll see why in a hot minute. Lizard. You look like that lizard from that. <laughs> From the lizard show, what's it called again? Okay. Geico commercials, you mean? <laughs> yeah. So we actually do I see those, I see those the pet stores. Mm -hmm. So leopard geckos are a very common lizard to see at pet stores. They're very friendly. The Zeus here is about an adult male, so he's not too big. I mean, I literally like four. Stores. I don't know why. Why? Why do you see them at pet stores? Well, these guys are a common pet to have. They're very easy to care for, and they're not really of any danger to humans. Like, I could do that, and he doesn't mind it at all. Now, these guys actually come from Afghanistan. That's their native homeland. And they... What was that? Kind of uh, Not really. Um, these guys are nocturnal, so they come out during the nighttime during the deserts. Now, the lead, reason they get the name leopard geckos is because of those spots along their head, tail, and usually their body, but Zeus doesn't have any spots on his body. That's just a skin coloration for him. <laughs> That's cute. Now, you can tell he's a healthy one by actually his tail. You see how his tail is all fat like that? Yeah, you see his fat tail? That means that he's got plenty of food, water, net fat stored up in there. So these guys <laughs> use so tail as like a sort of nutrients. They store their food in there. The fatter the tail, the more nutrients they have stored in there. What about his color tail? Like, how come his tail is like half white and half yellow? Scientists have not fully figured out why it is. The most common running theory is that the whiteness of the tail draws predators to attack it, and then they can detach their tails and then run away. Oh. But these guys can grow their tail back within like a month or two. Like a moment. Yeah, so they're very, reptiles are very resilient animals. Not all of them can regrow their tails very, very easily or at all. But geckos are one of the more common ones, as well as like blue throated lizards that you probably see around your neighborhood. But that's Zeus there. Now, what's cool about geckos is even though he doesn't, he, geckos have three traits to make them unique. So the first one is, is that they're very soft to the touch. So they actually are very soft compared to other reptiles. They lack defense and go for more speed. The second one is that these guys don't have eyelids. So they actually lick their eyes clean with their tongue. That's how they clean their eyes. 
And the third cool thing about these guys is that they actually have vocal cords. The vocal cord is basically what we use to talk. So these guys and all gecko species have vocal cords themselves. So they can talk? Talk is a strong term, but they can make screeching noises. They can make cooing noises. They can make all sorts of sounds. They can rely on a hiss or a growl. They basically can make screeching, cries, that sort of stuff. But they can't talk, talk. If that makes they sense. They make noises and and um, well, the doesn't make it any better. Expressions. Yeah. yeah. Basically, they're able to do that. Hey know. there, friend. <laughs> very friendly animals. Very easy to care for. Me. All right. Those little ones, last two big ones. That's it. Oh no! You gotta do all that lining. No, I'm just saying. They, they are. Wait, where's the? Get it. So this guy's name is Crush. <laughs> Ooh, look at Crush. Oh, Crush means business. Crush is actually a very friendly snake, so he's oh, okay. Crush is business. He looks like he looks like he means business just because he's a lot more, I guess you could say, thick than the other snakes I brought out. But he is a python, so a that python means, snake. Yeah, so python snake. So that means that he's more muscular than the other snakes I got out because their main form of attack and defense is biting hold and then wrapping around with these muscles. And a snake is ninety percent muscle. Big <laughs> guy. But ball pythons like Crusher are actually very friendly snakes. They can grow quite whoop, they can grow quite big. They can average about four and a half feet long. Well, some have pushed up to six feet. That's about as tall as I am, <laughs> lengthwise. Now, do you guys see those little holes on the top of his jaw? I'm going to try and get you guys to see it. You see the little dots? His ears? Top? No, those are not his ears, actually. So, what those little pits are, see the little holes? It looks like he has like a Hold the dash. What happened? as jewelry. However, this here's a kicker. These guys were a lot. So they basically put a snake around their neck, on their head, or on their wrists while they were alive to show how high, high they were in the hierarchy. But a relatively friendly snake nonetheless. <laughs> Are we still doing good on time, by the way? We're good. All right. We have one last tiny animal, and then we're going to move on to the last two one, big ones, OK? Yay. Now, the animal I'm going to bring out is my only venomous one. Ooh, oh, no. Ooh, venomous. Yes. I want to see it. That makes nope. it harmful and dangerous. Thank you. Was it cute, Ms. Boyer? Okay, Chalice, it's fine if you feel, feel so that So his way. name is Palpatine. You... Another Star Wars reference. His name's what? Palpatine. 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 Who's, well, which Star Wars character is that one? That's the, uh, that's the Dark Lord of the Sith, the one that turned Anakin bad and was shooting lightning out of his hand. Is he the one with the wet one? Have the wet face? Yes. The oh, I know. I know who you're talking to. So this is Palpatine because he is an emperor scorpion Ooh. Ooh. oh no wait let me see again show it <laughs> oh no that means okay. business okay now, believe it or not despite being a venomous animal, his venom is that bad his venom is about as potent as a bee sting mm. a bee sting um, bee stings hurt <laughs> well, if you're allergic to bees, they're pretty bad. But with him, if you get stung by him, just minor swelling. What he actually uses to attack his prey are these things. See these claws right here? Mm -hmm. Those are big crushers. So what he uses those for is to actually grab his prey and actually tear them apart. Oh, that's gotta hurt. So I, that's I eat scorpions. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Oh, don't and next me. to, and next to a scorpion. Little yeah. scorpion. Now you can actually tell a bad scorpion from a good scorpion in some cases. Now all scorpions are good, but there's ones that are far more venomous. So that you can okay. tell just like. So you see his claws again. Mm -hmm. See how they're gigantic. Mm. So that means they those instead of his stinger. He'll still use a stinger, but again, it's about as potent as a bee sting. Now, if he had tiny claws, oh, there he goes. He's waking up. <laughs> now, if he had tiny claws, though, then his stinger would be far more dangerous, far more venomous. That's interesting. And you, I don't know if you can actually see it, but on his claws are actually little hairs, and he actually uses those hairs. Whoop, there we go. Ah. <laughs> actually sense the world around him. Cool. Now, yes, I assume like dinosaurs, right? My dad wants to get something out of the animal. These guys have been around since before the dinosaurs. Before the dinosaurs. Wow. Yeah. Now, imagine a scorpion without the stinger-like tail there. So just, yep, see, he felt the box. Oh. So see this claw here? Watch what happens when I do this. Pinches Ooh, on to food. Yep. I don't want you popping out there, guys. So stay in there. <laughs> Again, harmless, but we always try and make sure these guys are safe. But imagine a scorpion that was roughly the size of a crocodile. So about 18 or so feet long. That lived in the waters before the dinosaurs. Wow. Imagine one of these guys in your oceans. <laughs> <laughs> That's now, pretty crazy. It's quite big. There was a time that they shared the world with other arthropods, which are basically hard-shelled insects or arachnids like this guy. He is an arachnid. So there's a scorpion roughly the size of a bulldog, a spider the size of my chest, <laughs> and a dragonfly the size of a bald eagle. So oh, that would have been so amazing to see, but kind of terrible. scary too. <laughs> It is kind of scary. I want to go near that one. <laughs> but again, you actually have this guy as a pet. I have a tailless whip scorpion. They are pretty cool animals to have, too. They're a little weird looking. They look like aliens, but they're pretty cool. They're really sweet. She's so sweet. Her name's Creepy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Her name's actually Creepy Cholita. <laughs> Oh. All right. So next on our list is a personal friend of mine. His name is Elmer. Elmer Fudd. He's one of our large animals. Oh, let's see what Elmer Fudd is. Come on, we got. Uh, oh, oh, look at that! Oh my God! So huh? he's known as an arch black white tiger. Wait, tiger. what is he? You cut out. So, the speech Tegu. T E. Tegu. 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 is an Argentine black and white one. So, because Argentine and white because of the coloration that they are. It's okay, big guy. Whoa. How nice are they? How nice are they? Yeah, like her pets. Well, these guys are actually called <laughs> lizard dogs in a lot of cases. They're the same as. As no, we're talking about lizards here. So these guys can actually be potty trained, trained and actually form bonds with their owners because they about... Yeah, that's interesting. However, they are quite a handful. You can see how big her foot here is. He's about four feet or so long and he's a little over like 15 pounds. You're okay, big guy. You're okay. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, put it down real quick so you can readjust yourself. <laughs> now, now, despite looking like this, this is actually a healthy boy. You see these big cheeks right here? Yeah. That's how you tell a boy from a girl. Girls have much smaller cheeks, actually don't have any cheeks at all, and are a lot thinner. Now, ma males have these big cheeks to go off to the girls. That's their formula of like showing off their muscles or their big mustache. It's okay, big guy. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> very funny. Like... He's a very powerful animal. He's very cool. <laughs> now, what's really cool about these guys is that they have a very unique diet. So these guys are omnivores, so that means they can eat almost anything. But pets, I've seen people feed them like meats, like buffalo wings, chicken wings. I've seen some people feed them hot dogs, a person some sushi. <laughs> As vegetarians, they like uh, in the veggie diet. They like bananas, spinach, lettuce, that sort of stuff. Wait, they, like spicy buffalo wings? Well, usually raw buffalo wings. But I've seen some people give them oh. cooked ones. There you go. There's a big one for you. Hey. <laughs> However, his favorite food to actually eat is eggs. Which is I raw. Love eggs. Just raw chicken eggs. You can eat them. He'll just put them in his mouth and he'll eat the whole thing, shell and all. <laughs> I love eggs. It's so tasty. Just like mm-hmm. this big lizard named a tegu? Yes, a tegu. Exactly. Now, these eye guys are monitor lizards, so they're in the same family as Komodos. Komodo dragons, this is another species of monitor lizard, just like them. Oh, I love lizards because they're awesome. <laughs> you know, that's a very good statement. So you can see how big he is, too. <laughs> that's, cool. that's, without his, that's without his tail going down there. So this is just his Ooh, body. Right? Cool, I get loaded than all human pets. You're okay, big guy. <laughs> so the, way uh-huh. tell, the way you tell it's a monitor lizard, by the way, is by that tongue. You see how it's forked at the end? You know. You're okay, big guy. Right, you want to go back in? There you go. <laughs> All right, I think we have one more animal. Yay! It will probably be my largest one, too. Oh. I get excited. The last one was is this man doing a good job? Yeah. Yes. So, I'm actually going to take my son because this guy's been known to actually go up on my head. So, but he's very. And bigger news. So this is a Burmese python. Ooh, bless you. <laughs> Just waking up, covering up, warming up. So he is called a Burmese python. These are the third largest snake species in the world. Whoa. Whoa, come on. So BK here is you're okay, big guy. BK here is roughly about 10 years old. Wow. He's roughly about nine feet long and about 40 pounds. How many pounds? 40, but he's actually pure muscle. Uh huh. Wow. So do you hear him hissing right now? That's him breathing right now. That's not threat hiss, that's just him breathing. He has two very large lungs that run throughout most of his body. Oh. Stop moving away from the camera, big guy. <laughs> I want to see you. <laughs> just you. And of course, this is a this is the challenge working with these big guys is that when they want to move, they can move. Because I'm technically oh my God. 40 pounds of pure living muscle. Okay, oh. big guy. But believe it or not, Burmese pythons like him are actually some of the friendliest snakes you can find. They're very gentle giants. Not of any danger to humans. I mean, oh, look at that. hi there. From the camera. Now he's being. Um, now he's being a camera ham. Yeah, now he's being photogenic. <laughs> now he's being crazy. Now, at his size, he could actually probably eat a very large rat. You're okay, big guy. You're okay. I'm just- uh, the looks of it, uh, yes, of course. What was that? A uh, left of it, uh, he he could eat uh, a lot. Uh, at his size, really, he only eats like large rats. That's probably the biggest thing that he can eat right now. Although snakes can unhinge their jaws 180 degrees. Wow. So if you know what 180 degrees is, it's basically their mm. mouth going being like this to this. Damn. And that last 
Our mouths don't open quite as wide as the snake's mouth. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Maybe go. We go. Oh. Now he's a very cool. Now again, he's still relatively young. He's only ten. So you guys can list less than the thirty years points. Oh. So they're very long-lived snakes. But at his rate, he's grown right now. He'll probably push me 14, 15 feet long very easily. Okay. Dad wants a snake as a, as a pet. What was that? He wants a snake as a pet. I said no. Yeah, you can actually have this guy as a pet. Where you got pet at? He wants a snake as an animal. <laughs> really? For real? Uh, yeah. Oh, you lower him as a pet. snake. You need a big tank. You need a big tank. He because first, Nick 10 to 12 feet long, their diet usually goes from little black rats and mice to usually a rabbit. And we feed these guys here. We feed them rabbits. Usually three pills, so it doesn't hurt the rabbit. It doesn't stress out our snakes. I feel bad for the rabbit. Well, they have to eat some. But again, as you can see, non-venomous, despite the... We saw one thing that was venomous, but that most of the things we saw were non-venomous. Non yeah, exactly. The scorpion was the only venomous animal. Even then, it wasn't that bad. But that is our last animal. I hope you guys enjoyed this little presentation. Do you guys have any questions about any animals or anything? Do you have any questions? Nope. John. Anyone John. have any questions? John. What was your name again? Christopher. 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 Let's all say Christopher. I used to have a fine name, Christopher. Um, yeah, here, I'm gonna take him off spotlight so that we can all um we can all clap for him. Ready? Jazz hands for Christopher. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was so informative and educational and intriguing. No problem. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> you guys were able to call us and get this experience going. Yes. You know what? Why don't you share with them? Um, you know what? You guys, they, they've just opened their reptile zoo. You can go yeah. visit. It's in Fountain Valley. How much does it cost? Uh, do you know? So for toddlers from, I think, zero to three, it's free admission. For kids from three or four to like 12 or 13, it's about $10. Anyone older than that, that's $15. Hmm. So, so it's not extremely expensive. Plus, while you're here, you can have encounters with a big Burmese python to take pictures with him. You get a little hands-on encounter, and maybe you see a bunch of other animals that you didn't get to see in our little presentation here. Because we've got uh -huh. a lot. Over a hundred reptiles here. You ain't left yet? You ain't left? Do I lift? <laughs> yeah, I lift <laughs> quite a bit. These guys. I love reptiles. Thank you. But if there's nothing else I can help you guys with, thank you for having us, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. <laughs> thank you so you much too. for coming. Thank you so much. This has been uh, amazing. Hopefully we'll see you guys at the zoo one day. <laughs> Okay, give him a round of applause again. Thank you so much, Christopher. You have a wonderful day. Thank you guys, too. Please stay safe. Playing with reptiles and amphibians and arthropods. Bye. Yes, Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.